Hey, welcome back to the show. It's me, Dan Shaheen. Today, we're going to talk about what? We're going to talk about X-Men. We're getting back to basics, baby. So we're going to talk about uh, this week's batch of Dawn of X books, including X-Men number five, X-Force number six, and New Mutants number six. Uh, vastly varying levels of quality on these X books. Let's talk about uh, them in specific and Dawn of X in general today on Comic Book News. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the show. Thanks for joining us. You know, I know I've been uh, reviewing some stuff that's maybe a little off kilter uh, compared to my usual fare. Today, we're getting back into the mainstream with some X-Men and Marvel comics. But I got to tell you, I love all kinds of comics. I love that indie stuff that I've been reviewing. And truth be told, while those videos don't always take off like a rocket, some of them end up being some of my most watched and most popular content. So a little something for everybody here. On comic book news um, speaking of something for everybody or a, a, a mixed bag as it were let's talk about this week's X books including New Mutants number six X-Men number five and X-Force number six now these are the last three these are the only three books that I'm still reading of the Dawn of X books I, I uh, 86 Marauders I 86 Excalibur and uh, you know, but never fear, there's a whole new wave of stuff coming down, including a bunch of giant-sized X-Men one-shots and all kinds of stuff. New Wolverine series, as well as an X-Factor series. So we're going to have plenty of stuff to review. I'm definitely going to review the early issues. But, you know, let's get into these. Let's get into where we're at, you know. Dawn of X launched with a ton of promise. House of X, Powers of X was uh, legitimately a hit. Fun and engaging with fans. Critics like myself and, and and out there in general, most people were digging what Hickman was laying down. World building, right? Problem is there's a difference between world building and storytelling. And now while world building can be an important part of storytelling, it is not a replacement for storytelling. So Hickman's taken a lot of time and been setting up all these pieces, right? All these uh, pieces on the game table plucking the X-Men he wants from the past and putting them into the mix today. You know, they're, they're, everyone's immortal, right? So they can't die. So there's, I've talked a lot on this show about low stakes in the X-Men books and, and Hickman actually addresses that a little bit in, in um, the X-Men we're going to read this week. And I have a feeling that um, the immortality jazz uh, is probably just going to be around long enough to get the table totally set before we take that away and bring some drama back to the X-Men. But, hey, I've been wrong before. Heck, I've been wrong about this stuff. But, wait, why are we talking about X-Men comics when we've got a million-dollar comics game? Right? And we could be looking at X-Men. So, uh, let, let's do that. <laughs> Wow, and here we are in the Million Dollar Comics Cam. And, oh, this is not the cover that I showed for X-Men number five. It's a variant cover. You know, interesting, my normal shop, uh, Scruffy Nerd Herder and Eureka, uh, was shorted, I guess, of X-Men. I didn't have it in my pull box this week. I was a little surprised by that. Luckily, I'm lucky enough to not have just one store, but two stores in my area, which a, a lot of places in the country don't even have one, so I'm really lucky to also have North Coast Role Playing in Eureka, um, and Barry over there hooked me up with uh, the variant, the Dark Phoenix variant cover. I don't really like it. I like the regular cover better. I Generally speaking, I like the normal covers better because I think usually they pick the best image for the main cover of the comic, you know, which is like a no-brainer, right? That's what you do. Anyway, let's stop talking about com covers. Let's talk about comics. Which one first? Let's do them in the order that I read them. I read from least to most and anticipated. So first, I read New Mutants. And you know, I've been liking the Rod Rice stuff, but I've been hating uh, the, the Hickman Rod Rice stuff, the main stuff with the New Mutants, the legacy New Mutants that we know. And I've been really, really, really not enjoying the stuff with these characters. But I had it on my pull list. It was in my box, and I owe it to my store. If it's on my list and it's in my box, I'm going to pick it up and pay for it. So I bought it and gave him another chance. Was I surprised? Well, the art was only slightly better than the previous couple of issues, uh, which is really not saying much because it was horrible. I mean the previous couple of 
uh, the non-Hickman issues. I, I really think it was a mistake to go out of the box with fill-in issues on New Mutants. There was just no need. I, I, I've heard and read that the idea is, um, you know, that there's something being set up and they're trying to time these issues so that it, it, while you don't need to read them all in a particular order, even though they sort of pretend you do, um, they are trying to set up the timing so certain events will echo throughout the books. Um, but come on. This story was stupid from the beginning. This character, we still don't know why he's purple. They've got bazookas that neutralize mutant powers. Which is just so dumb. On so many levels, I can't even... I don't... I mean, besides every... Literally every book having a different power-neutralizing villain. Um, just the fact that it's in, like, a rocket launcher is just really dumb. Okay, and we're bringing in Boom Boom. And Boom Boom, she's another another theme of these new books seems to be hard-drinking female leaders. Now, I got nothing against strong females. I love strong females. I love them as leaders in the X-Men, too. I mean, who's better than Storm? Even after she lost her powers with the X-Men, right? Strong females are great. I thought Kitty Pride was a good idea as a leader uh, for Marauders, but I think making her a, like a lush-type character is really dumb. And they're doing the same thing here with Boom Boom, who shows up hard drinking and is visibly drunk and noticeably drunk. Um, I will say the art stepped up a lot from the previous issues, but still not saying much. A little bit of commentary in here about pacifism and how, you know, they're really not supposed to be killing humans. Um, so they should be using more passive type of resistance. Okay. Boom, boom, coming in, even though drunk and even with her powers neutralized by the stupid power bazooka, She's like, oh, I'm a badass. I've been on Black Ops team since I was 12 years old, and I'm super cool, and I'm dope. And she's not. It's really lame. I mean, showing up visibly drunk to a, like, a military operation, to me it's grounds for uh, getting kicked out. It's grounds for like somebody that you can't trust in the thick of things that's going to show up drunk. Am I being too nitpicky? Is it kind of fun to have a dr hard drinking, hard fighting character? Am I being a little hypocritical, maybe, because Wolverine's always been a drinker? No, it's stupid, okay? Wolverine's metabolism doesn't let him get drunk. That's been established in continuity. Uh, no, no such luck for Tabitha slash Boom Boom. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to even go into it because it's really dumb. The motivations here, everything, the, the motivations of this character and his actions here are really don't make a ton of sense to me. They're trying to set up this cartel, you know, obviously as yet another uh, a human alliance against the mutants. And the one thing I, enjoy, I did like about this issue is at the end, you know, they've sort of like toyed around with these characters who have mental abilities that mess with people's minds and, you know, how they tried to change people's minds to make their lives better. But in reality, that's going to come back to haunt them and it's sort of foreshadowing of what's probably going to happen because they took bird bird brain and and his parent his dad was just killed but she sort of brainwashed him into thinking he was dead he's been dead for years and absolutely that's going to come back to haunt him and then you know uh finally what in fact the next issue is called uh, what is it called bird uh, uh bird of prey so i'm sure we'll see something already paying off from that dumb decision I won't know because I'm dropping this book. I don't care if I like the Hickman stuff. I'm not going to read uh, one third or one half garbage in a series. I'll pick up the ones I want off the shelf and take it off my pull list and hope that I've got them in stock. Way to really sabotage a launch of what could have been, could have been like a super strong book and turn it into just like a semi weak one. Okay. X Force number six. Um, this one I liked a little bit more. Um, we basically now we've established this arc has been to establish the X Force. They're the CIA of Krakoa, the X Men, whatever the mutants, whatever you want to call their society, and uh, they they're a black ops team and they're totally run by Beast. And Beast we're seeing is sort of like morally, a little bit morally compromised and is willing to do what it takes for mutantdom, basically. Now we've introduced yet another group of sort of plant based villains 
here, Terra Verde. I, I, honestly, I've lost track. I don't know how this ties in with the previous plant-based uh, groups and if they're involved or not. I, I feel like they're stretching this organic stuff a little further than, than they really need to. It's okay. One part I like is in the text pieces here, they sort of allude to the fact that Charles Xavier may have allowed himself to be killed in the pages of X-Force because he wanted the world to see him and the X-Men to see him r resurrected, to see that it could happen even without Charles Xavier. And it was sort of like a false flag, Xavier's confession. He talks about, um, you know, he talks about the need for, uh, for, for that moment. And it was almost like the Pearl Harbor for mutants and what you know did fdr know about pearl harbor that it was coming and did they allow it to happen so this is the sort of moral ambiguity we're setting up for x-force and okay all right i'll buy that and beast as a leader who's always been sort of a happy-go-lucky character in the past more recently was shown to have this sinister side that dark beast character and everything else that morrison played with i like he's super intelligent the fact that he was maybe masking some of his stuff with humor in the past actually makes sense i love hank mccoy as a character i liked him when he was not furry i liked his just abilities and powers and i liked him when he was furry i liked that he was a major member of the avengers as well as the x-men before that was like before everybody was so i like it i like him as the center of this book i'm gonna keep reading um x-force and we can see already where you know, the basic idea here is Hank's been narrating throughout how he's got control of everything and that he sees everything and he's never wrong and he never makes a mistake, except obviously he has, and we've got this new um, menace on the loose. Okay. And uh, next we've got, what does this say? It says Domino. Okay, on to the one I was looking forward to the most and that I think I enjoyed the most. X-Men number five, although I don't like this cover, although it is um, an homage to Burn Air X-Men, it just makes me remember how far we've fallen from the X-Men. I mean, in general, all of the Dawn of X books, with the exception of X-Men, I'm going to say, and maybe the Rod Rice stuff, is pretty low second, third tier type artists. X-Force artist Segovia is, is okay. Everybody else kind of low quality teams. The low quality of Marvel's lineup right now has me reading almost only X-Men and most of those are not good. Um, if they could only step up the quality of the creative teams on these books, they could have had a super monster hit that would keep fans engaged. I, feel, I have the feeling they're going to risk losing a few um, if it stays at this low quality. But it looks like they're getting Adam Kubert on Wolverine and, and it looks like they're stepping it up because they've seen they've probably seen the dramatic fall off um, in sales of these titles. Okay, X-Men, number five. What have I done? So this is all about um, uh, Serafina of the Vault, right? These are characters I wasn't that aware of, uh, 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 the Vault. Apparently they have a, uh, some kind of like this vault. They can go in and time is sped up in there and they sort of techno evolve. They don't evolve, they do technological evolution in there. So it's sort of tied in to the ideas of humans technologically evolving past mutants who are organically evolving. Okay, so we're tying back into House of X themes for sure. Um, basically, the idea is that they're gonna send in this team of three people that they think could survive in this time sped up, manipulated uh, environment. They're gonna send in X-23, who's actually known as Wolverine now. She refers to herself, actually, I'm Wolverine. And Wolverine's like, you tell him, kiddo. Um, and they're sending in uh, the recently resurrected uh, Darwin, who has evolutionary powers, and this guy named Sink, who can sort of like copy another mutant's powers. And uh, they do a little bit of talking about him, about how he's been gone for a long time and how they're bringing back some of these mutants that have been gone for a long time. There's, it's really weird psychologically for them and that this is, might play into a schism of some of the mutants coming back and maybe the, the, you know, being a little less united in the future. Anyway, I really love the art um, in, in in this book. You know, I love, uh, who, who's doing it? R.B. Silva, right? This is not you anymore, but Silva is, is a top-notch artist. This is really high-quality looking stuff. 
and this is the kind of quality we deserve on on these exports if if they had a little higher quality co across the board i'd still be reading all of these books and they'd be making more money honestly um so the whole idea is that they sent in oh yeah sync who can copy powers and they feel like these are the only three that could possibly survive in there um, but that the stakes are if they get lost in there they won't know we won't be able to get them back they won't be able to communicate and so it's explicitly stated if they go in there and get locked in somehow they we will not have proof of their life or death so they cannot be resurrected so hickman is putting some stakes in on these characters and you know sure enough they make a mistake and i'm not going to ruin it but they've been in there um they've been in there for a long time and uh Next time, next time it's something owed. So um, I, I feel like there's something owed, all right. I feel like we're all owed uh, some better X comics right now. X-Men, like I said, enjoying. I will continue reading this in perpetuity. This is on my list. I feel like as long as Hickman's writing X-Men and they've got a top tier type artist, I... Heck, I'll even live with a fill-in issue or two here or there. Um, but I, I, I'm not going to go for the quality of New Mutants. At least X-Force has been... Um, Percy's writing has been pretty good. And the art teams that they've been on, and I feel like... While, while not top tier, I don't know. It's really hard, guys. Because I don't know if you've ever noticed here, but the walls of comic book news are enshrined uh, with uh, homages to some of the great artists. Uh, and writers of, of, of X-Men. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this before. So, you know, when you've got guys like uh, John Byrne, and you've got just the Jim Lee, and you've got just the legacy of incredible X-Men artists that have been out there, um, I think these books and these characters deserve better teams than, um, than they're, be than they're being um, assigned, right? I feel like the quality has slipped. And uh, it's not enough anymore to just be an X book. That doesn't guarantee you a hit. Comics are too expensive now, and there's just too many of them to put up with garbage books. So um, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing these videos. My views have been taking a hit a little bit, but I haven't been putting out as many videos and been trying some different experiments. Heck, I'm going to keep doing that because you know what? This is a passion play for me. I don't really care. Um, about monetization it's more just like a goal to attain so if we get there we get there if we don't we don't in the meantime i just want to thank you for supporting thank you for putting comments down there and talking about comics with me and uh thanks for liking and subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications and most of all thank you for watching we'll see you next time